right in front of us is a Terra TM9. This is a Montenegro striker fired pistol. Kind of interesting, kind of unique. Uh, first thing before we disassemble, we check our magazine, make sure there's no ammo in there, and check the chamber, and we can see that there's no ammo inside the chamber either. So we're good to disassemble this pistol. First thing we'll have to do is turn down the disassembly lever. Uh, it might want to move on you, so just hold it with your thumb, rack the slide back, and then pull forward on it, and that'll pull the slide right off of the frame. Next up, we're going to remove the recoil spring, and it's on a guide rod, it's captured, it's easy to pull out. Pull up on the barrel, and we can pull it out of the slide. Just jig a little, little bit, and it'll come right out. And really, if you were going to just do a basic disassembly, this is it. This is all you need to do. Uh, you could run a brush through your barrel, you could clean the feed ramp a little bit, clean the carbon out of that little area right there. Um, that's pretty much it. You could clean the, the frame a little bit if you want to, but usually you don't have to. Maybe if you've got a magazine in there that was dirty, you could clean out the mag well a little bit. Uh, but that's pretty much it. This, uh, this is a pretty easy field strip, and that's all you would need to do for this gun. Now, to go to beyond that, um, there's not really anything to disassemble here. I mean, you, you can take that spring off of there, but we're not going to bother. Nothing to disassemble there. Um, but there are a couple of things we can disassemble here. So what we need to do to get this end cap off is pull that little plastic sleeve there down with something pokey like a drift or a punch or something like that. So we're just going to pull down on there. And then that'll allow us to push the end plate off. Keep your hand over top of it because as you release that, there's going to be some pressure from the components that are in there, such as that ejector plunger and this plastic sleeve here. But now that we've got that end plate off, we can just go ahead and pull that ejector. Is it going to come out or am I going to need to do something else? No, oh, there it comes. There comes the ejector plunger. That's what's putting all the pressure on our ejector here. And we can pull our firing pin and spring out. And next we've got this plunger here and we've got the extractor. So if we push down the plunger, that extractor will come out, keeping our finger on the plunger. Now there's nothing holding it in and we can just pop it into our hand. So there's our plunger extractor. It's very similar to a Glock. And uh, this slide is taken down as much as we can as well. Now the lore is going to be a little bit more complicated. We've got a pin right there. We've got a pin right there. Uh, so we'll need to pull those guys out. And it looks like we've got one right there on the trigger as well. I'm going to see if we need to do that one or not. If we can just pull it down without uh, taking that out. Uh, to do this, we're going to need the appropriate size drifts. And we're going to need a hammer. And you'll typically put this on a block as well to, uh, to pull these parts out. All right, there's my first pin right there. Now she comes. I'm going to go ahead and knock that other rear pin out while I'm hitting my pins. There's that rear pin. It's a solid style. I've got that trigger pin. I'm just pressing it out really with hand pressure. Oh, I lied. I'm going to need to give it a little tap. Now the trigger is loose and I can feel my trigger bar is loose now. And I can pull my trigger out the bottom. This is the orientation of that spring, the trigger return spring. Looks like my slide release is ready to come out as well. So it's over here. Yeah. And that slide release was just hanging on down there on the trigger. So there it is. Now with the trigger bar loose, I can tilt this guy up a little bit and I can pull out my trigger bar. With the trigger bar out, I can take this guy. It'll rotate around that little pin at the back so I can pull it all the way up and then out. And then there's my sear and trigger stuff there. Now this whole steel chassis wants to come out. I can, I can pull at the back here and get it moving, but I need to pull this guy off. Yeah, I don't really see a way to get that disassembly lever out of the way. So uh, I guess this is as stripped down as I'm going to get. I, the magazine release down in there, I don't see an easy way to get that out. I imagine that has to come out. Yeah, I'm not sure how that guy comes out, so... It, it might need to come out with the whole chassis, and I'm not going to be able to get the whole chassis out. So this is as far as we're going today. Uh, let's start reassembling it. All right, here's the Terra connector, and here is a Glock connector. Boy, they look close, but not quite close enough. This guy's got a bit of an angle on him, whereas this one's flat. So 
no go on using the uh, the Glock connector on there. But boy, these guys are similar. Uh, similar, not quite similar enough though. The Glock one's just a little bit longer. I wonder if it would work. And if I try to put the Glock plunger in there, it's not quite the right size. It's a little bit smaller uh, with the uh, with the Terra one, so I won't be able to use that. Now, if we need to remove the spring from the firing pin, what we need to do is pull down on the spring itself. There's two cups that are holding that thing in. So we pull it down hard, let those cups up, and they just kind of fall out. And then there is our striker spring. And just in keeping in theme with comparing it to Glock parts, there's the Glock one next to it. So this one's a little bit shorter, a little bit springier. This Glock one's a little bit lighter, a little bit longer. I wonder if it would work. Let's try the Glock one on there. Let's we'll see what that does. Now to get this spring back on here, you, uh, it, as you push down, it, it holds it down here. It'd be nice if it was a little bit further up, so it'd be easier to grab onto. So what I'm gonna do is use the plunger there and then just pop it down and pop my little cups in there. Oh, that's just one cup. Grab the other one. And that is, well, that's the Glock striker spring on there. It feels a little bit lighter. Hmm. I think I might have to try that. I'm going to try that and see if, what it does to my uh, uh, trigger pull. So to put my, uh, put my plunger in, what I'm going to do is go ahead and put it in. I can see through the hole what that spring is doing and I can push it in. So I'm pushing in on the plunger and I take the ejector and I want to get that foot in there. And then that'll just kind of hold on to the uh, extractor now. Next, I'm going to get the uh, extractor plunger, which kind of puts pressure on the extractor, pop it in, get my firing pin in. Now this next part's going to be a little bit tricky because I need to push both of these guys in and then slide this end plate in there. Uh, so what I'm going to do to do that is just press on it with a punch. I'm going to get that plastic bit first. I'm just going to get this guy in far enough to where it's holding it. Okay, so it's holding it. Now i got to push that plunger. Shield your eyes. <laughs> Don't let this hit you. And it's all the way in. Boy, I'm curious what that did to my trigger pull, putting that other stress spring in there. So here I could test out, make sure that all of these are working as they should. Now these grips are supposed to come off. I can feel it's a little bit loose, uh, but I can't for the life of me figure out how to pull this bit out. Uh, it's just in there too tight, uh, so I'm not going to be able to pull it out. And I don't have any great other grip panels here anyways, so who cares? We're going to take our sear block. I'm just going to show this to you guys in detail in case any of you guys take it apart and need to put it back together again later. Uh, if you do want to make a nicer trigger pull, this is one of the areas you might need to polish or just grease it like I have. We're going to take that lip there and we're going to engage it with the back. And then we're going to rotate it into place. Next, we're going to get that trigger bar and it's going to go... This flat end here has to go in that slot. So I gotta schmiggle it in there. And it also has to clear the front, uh, the, this front post at the same time. So once it's in there, once it's in there, you can press down on this and, uh, and seat that guy. We can look through that hole and see that it's clear and then pound in this rear pin as well. I'm just trying to get it flush-ish or recess a little bit on both sides. So that trigger bar is in the right spot. So here's our slide release and you can see it's got that spring on there and it's gonna fit right here on the trigger. So uh, we need to make sure that that all fits nice and tight and it's gonna go on just like that. Whereas our trigger bar, with that little doohickey there, it has to fit in here somewhere. So what I might do here, I've just 
I got to keep the trigger return spring on this side of the bar. And to do that, I'm not going to be able to get this trigger bar in. So what I'm going to do is start the pin from this side. And then I'm going to bring the trigger in to where I can get it. I'm not going to pound that pin all the way in though. All right, after much dicking around, I've got the spring on the right side of the bar and I got a little bit of action there. So that's doing what I want it to do. Next, I'm just going to get that trigger bar in place. And last time it was pretty easy to just push it in there. As long as it's lined up properly. Yeah, it just pushes right in. So I should be able to push it from the other side here. Just to get it fully in place. Hey, that's better. All right, next I can take this guy and stick it in that little slot right in there. Check from the other side to see that it's on correctly. Check my tension. Everything's looking good. I can confirm on this side here, it's pulling down on it when it gets to the end of its travel. The barrel goes in. I wonder if I need the Gen 3 clock springs to fit. And pop my Rico spring in, just so it sits on, sits on that little shelf there. Got my takedown lever down. Mm, that pin could just be a little bit lower. Interesting. So that uh, that Glock firing pin spring did work. So if you want, I wonder if that changed the trigger pull. All right, bets on if that changed the trigger pull at all. It was like eight and a bit before. Oh, eight pounds. All right. I think we we might have saved a little bit of trigger pull weight there with that lighter sear spring. Sear spring? Firing pin spring. Yeah. We're under eight pounds now. Interesting. Uh, it does make a difference. All right. I'm going to show you this. This is with the factory striker spring in there, back in there. So you saw with the Glock uh, striker spring, we're getting eight pounds just under. And now we're back up to nine pounds. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it at the range. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just try it factory for a while, um, but this might be an option to get my pull weight down. Now, one last thing, if you're curious, cause I was, it will fit a Gen 3 Glock guide rod and spring. So if you want to, change the spring out to something else it's fairly easy you just pop your Glock version in and uh, you know it'll just work oh man those steel guide rods are so loud <laughs> this one's actually tungsten and uh, boy that's rattly now maybe I'll put the plastic one back in There, that's not quite so loud. 